We hear the word AGOA quite often. Now that stands for the African Growth and Opportunity Act and uh, for uh, more clarity on what exactly AGOA is and where we are and why we need AGOA, we've invited Wolf Browdy from uh, Agbiz to join us in studio today. Very briefly, uh, Wolf, just background, what exactly is AGOA? Explain to us. Thank you, Lisa. Um, now, thanks for the opportunity to, to chat about it. Uh, it is preferential access, that means duty-free access to the U.S. market. And it is unilaterally granted by the Americans. So it's not a trade agreement like we have with the Europeans and uh, like we have with Southern Africa or with the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. This is unilateral. So it's given by America to a, a range of African beneficiaries, almost the entire continent. And we are just one of that set of beneficiaries. But it allows us to export a range of products into the United States that otherwise would attract tariffs. Not very high tariffs, admittedly, but for some subcategories of, of, of automotive and other goods, uh, significant tariffs. So there are significant savings for, for some of our commodities and products going into America that we otherwise wouldn't have. And we are competing against very competitive uh, countries in that market. Everybody wants to sell into the U.S. So this margin gives us a, 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 a real benefit. Yeah, so what are the other benefits for South African agriculture? Well, we... If you look at what is going in, agriculture, automotive are perhaps one of the biggest beneficiaries. They about 99% of their products going in are covered under a go. Mm -hmm. And then for agriculture, just over 70% of our goods sold into America get a discount, uh, get a preference under a go. So us, it's, it's, it's very helpful. And obviously some of the biggest beneficiaries then would be South African uh, citrus and wine and uh, products going in which are going into a very lucrative market. Um, the premiums are quite good. Um, citrus industry has an entire dedicated U.S. program that runs uh, annually. And um, we are hoping that we can even extract more value out of a go because we haven't, we haven't maximized what benefit we can actually get out of it uh, at the moment. So will it really make a difference if we lose it? Yeah, you know, the, the savings are uh, close to about $3 billion for agriculture. For automotive, it goes up to oh, almost 40 billion, uh, I mean, excuse, excuse million, mm -hmm. <laughs> million dollars. Um, but the, the, the other uh, uh, benefit for suffering agriculture is that we get, we get access through the, 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 the GOA system to all of the support that is offered under a GOA, uh, the trade facilitation, the, the, the ability to enter the market with, the, with forms of support. Mm -hmm. But for us, primarily, it's actually that margin, that competitive margin that we get and the access to the networks that we get from being in the market that we otherwise wouldn't have. And for example, uh, you find the Australians have a free trade agreement with the Americans. We don't. Um, so that would cover wine coming from Australia. Then you've got Chile with a free trade agreement uh, into the U.S., and so for them, there's agricultural products which are going in, which we'd otherwise have to compete with on a slightly uneven playing field. So what is the status as far as the renewal of uh, AGO is concerned? Well, the actual, the overall ag agreement is very likely going to be renewed. Um, there was a small question mark over it in the last few years. But now we can say safely say the Americans and uh, are fully supportive of it being renewed. It should be renewed by August 2025. That's when it expires. It has to be renewed before then. Um, I wouldn't say with the elections that we're going to see it renewed this year, though. Uh, it's just too jam-packed, and it's a very politically charged environment in America at the moment. So I don't think either side would really be able to push it through the system uh, with, the, with the amount of noise happening around the elections. Mm -hmm. But definitely next year it would be renewed. Um, and the hope is that it's not just renewed but revitalized and, or tweaked in some ways it helps us. At the moment, every year, for example, every country gets assessed for eligibility into a go. Now that introduces a bit of un uh, unpredictability. We want to see that uh, as a two-year cycle, and that's, that's been uh, pretty much agreed to. Uh, the coverage will be extended slightly. There'll be other elements such as if you're a country which has developed successfully to a higher income level, it's, you have to then uh, uh, maintain that level for five years before you're graduated out. At the moment, countries can be graduated out much easier, and then they have to get themselves back in and etc. Um, and the conditions for suspending countries also would be tweaked and refined. 
Um, so overall, we end up with a, with a, a better agreement uh, as well as a renewed agreement. So how can we improve South Africa's participation in NGAWA? Well, we have, we have a few related issues with uh, our trade with America, which are not directly related to uh, AGOA, but which would go through AGOA. And that is we are under our citrus protocol for phytosanitary reasons. We can only export from two of the nine regions at the moment. So we are only exporting about a quarter of what we could, or even, gosh, under 20% of, under 20% of what we could to the States. Mm. So about 85% of our production could still, uh, to the U.S., is not allowed at the moment. And that protocol has been in limbo for a number of years. And we're also awaiting formal, uh, finalization of an AVOS protocol, which will allow us to export AVOS to the States. Without that protocol, we, we simply cannot export for phytosanitary reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's prospects for red meat exports to the US. We could, uh, we could start and conclude a phytosanitary protocol for red meat exports as well. Um, but in the politically charged atmosphere, and us perhaps not being well regarded, some of these things remain frozen as a result of some of the, the, the political uh, issues. Um, so having those resolved would be fantastic. Um, and there's been some talk at the latest to go forum, which just concluded last week, that there is a investment framework that uh, was signed between the two parties uh, called the TIDCA um, back in, gosh, 2008. And it, it pretty much went into limbo. If that thing can be revitalized, it allows us to deal with issues such as the citrus disputes and um, citrus issues in a much more predictable framework. But the, the scope for us accessing the U.S. market and benefiting from it is still uh, very good. We can still do more in that market than we have at the moment in terms of agri-exports. Mm-hmm. Wolf, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. I believe you're visiting us soon again to talk about something else, and that is the SA and U.S. legislation. Yes. Am, I, am I correct? Yes, that yes. would be lovely. So, so yes, that's Wolf Browdy from Agbiz talking to us about AGOA or the African Growth and Opportunity Act and uh, look out for our next interview with him on the US and SA legislation. There's been a, quite a bit of friction between South Africa and the US, but uh, that's all later.